done. Hey, Tally, what are you doing? Just ticking off another part of my Dragonflight meta achievement. Oh, wow. You're doing that. Yeah, why'd you sound surprised? Well, it's quite a lot of work. Uh, yeah, and? Well, you're quite lazy and also not very good at the game. Yeah, well, lucky for me, I've completed most of it already just by playing the game. So I've only got four more shots from a legendary album, three more grand hunt locations, 10 more hunt steps, 23 more hunt bosses, eight disgruntled hunters, three hunt companion cards, 13 Barkata pets, 1 fishing hole, 8 massive lunkers, 20 beef snacks, 3 Jaradin tablets, 3 obsidian keys, 14 whelp daycare quests, 5 whelp races, 5 hatchlings, 19 special encounters, 10 different storms, 4 sniffing quests, 35 treasures, 16 small treasures, 7 forbidden treasures, 4 books, 9 sealed scrolls, 3 frost stone vault storms, 1 sending stone, winter pelt conversation list, fringe benefits, and blue dawn to go. Oh, well, when you put it like that, need any help? Just a back button on the achievement tab. Seriously, please, give me a back button on the achievement tab. Oh, hey, what's this? I don't know, but it's huge. It's, it's, it's 10.2.7. Hey, Tally, do you want to come and do Pandaria Remixed with us? Uh, yeah, I mean... No, I have to get this meta achievement done. I can't waste time having seriously loads of fun in Pandaria with you lot. This, this means something. For once, I want to finish something that I started. For once, I want to do something that I can be proud of and not give up as soon as it got hard. I need to do this for me, for my own dignity and my own self-respect. Zalatath is coming. Okay, yeah, f it. Save me a cloak. Knowledge is power. Hello Internet, Tally Essen here. Welcome to patch 10.2.7. Welcome to Dark Heart. Now, before you close this video and open up, wow, all excited to play the new patch, I probably should warn you, it's not actually here. Actually, we don't even have a release date yet, but it's on the PTR. The last couple of days have been an absolute orgy of data mining and testing of everything. New quests and features and weird things that make us do the good speculation, the juicy speculation, and transmogs and mounts and heritage armor and personal fully designable tabards that you don't need to be in a guild to wear. <laughs> And this is before we even get on to Mists of Pandaria Remix, which is what we're all now supposed to call the new time running event. We just all call it Mists of Pandaria Remix now, like that's normal and like Pandemonium never even existed. A far superior name in every sense and everyone's just acting all innocent like that was never even a thing. But I remember it, Blizz. I remember Pandemonium. It'll always be Pandemonium to me. You can't stop me. I'll always call it Pandemonium here on YouTube and on Twitter. Yeah, that's right, I still call it Twitter. We've been able to test Pandemonium and the whole main part of the show is gonna be all about letting you know exactly what it is, exactly how it works, and giving our considered opinion on the event. I don't wanna spoil anything, but honestly, internet, this is so good. Like, it's legitimately brilliant. It's basically season of discovery for retail. It's reasonable to suggest that for many, many players, there's just not going to be a content drought in the lead up to the war within because of it. It really is that good. But first of all, a roundup of all the other cool stuff that has been found on the 10.2.7 PTR with the news roundup. As with any new content patch on the PTR, the last few days have seen a huge array of new mounts and transmog sets appear, either because they are present in the game or mount tab, or because they were deep in the data where they thought they were safe before WoW had dragged them kicking and screaming into life to be looked at by you. So here they are, internet. Look at them, look at them. There's a huge void fish with a lantern on its head. It's clearly very ugly, clearly very f and it's one of a lot of void themed things in Dark Heart. We've got the classic horde wolf mount, but kitted out in Night Elf Alliance style armor, and a classic Alliance knight saber dressed in its best horde gear. All very exciting and cross faction, but the winner of our new Most Hype Mount of the Patch award definitely goes to these things. Floating petrol powered surfboards, goblin manufactured gliders, hoverboards with four recolors. I know what you're thinking. Trading post. <laughs> That'll work. And you're right. 
One of the recolors is definitely connected to the trading post, as are loads of other beachy, summery themed items that we know definitely are heading to the trading post in the near future. Like the multiple different beachwear outfits, or the rainbow parasol and deck chair, which I don't know why, but I've just got a feeling we might be looking at a June date for the beach stuff. It's just a gut feeling, I can't explain it, you know? Something else for you to look at. Heritage Armor for Draenei and Trolls. Look at it. And I've got to admit, when I first saw these sets, my first reaction was, oh no. Not because I don't like them necessarily, although actually I don't really like them all that much and I want Troll and Draenei players to be happy, you know? I mean, Draenei players are always happy because they play Draenei, but I want that for Trolls too. Basically, what I'm saying is I wanted Troll beards. I was rooting for Troll beards and instead you got a weird face bandana thing which is comically long like Wee Willy Winky's night hat or some shit. That looks like it is specifically designed to cover the gorgeous gorgeous flowing troll beard that isn't underneath it. And I thought, if I don't especially love these sets, then troll and drawn eye players won't either, and that made me sad. But. It turns out, people generally think these sets are great. The Draenei heritage is based on one of the most iconic early concept images of the race, which is legit wish fulfillment for some older heads, and the troll ensemble appears to be ticking a lot of the right boxes too. I was ready for a whole shit show segment here, but I guess that'll have to wait for the quest lines. Other PTR updates include a fresh new redesign on the pet stable UI with a bigger pet window, favorites list, and more information on each pet. It's all searchable, and best of all, pets can be released directly from the window without having to summon them. Actually, best of all, BM hunters have a dedicated slot for their animal companion summon. I like the new stable UI. There are two new quest lines on the PTR. The first we can play in its entirety, so blue spoiler bots, and feels like maybe it should have been part of 10.2.5? In it, we meet Calestra, who tells us stories about her sister who she wants to bury in Belameth. As the story progresses, it becomes clear that her sister is Coraleth, the primalist who is the main antagonist of the Onaran Plains leveling campaign, and who you killed at the climax of that arc. As you can imagine, there are residents of the new Night Elf capital that really aren't fans of Coraleth's favorite burial spot within the city, and the questline concludes with a player choice that settles the dispute. It's a really nice, insightful exploration of a relatively minor character, a humanizing of a baddie, and the kind of attention to character and detail of what happens next that Dragonflight has been really good at. Oh, and uh, it was a shit show, obviously. Wow, that's incredible! More story content for Night Elves, while the other races are completely in limbo. Just what this game needed. More Nelf stuff, even more Night Elf-focused content, there are other races in the game, you know. This soft garbage is so weak. God, what a bunch of garbage, lol. You do realize that you gargling the garbage that they deign to vomit in your mouth is why you're constantly dining on garbage, right? Demand better. Hey, no fair. I don't think this quest is garbage. I really like it. And it's not just night elves getting story. It's Void Elves too! Wowhead have data mined the quest names of the Hunt for the Harbinger quests that are listed as one of the main features of the patch on the roadmap. Redbot spoiler here, obviously. But the summary reads, Meet with Khadgar and Illyria Windrunner in Dalaran to begin investigating the mysterious Harbinger and her dark heart. Which instantly makes me think many things. One, Telogrus Rift has been updated in this PTR. It now has a lot of unknown NPCs hanging about looking bust and a new, currently unusable portal with a Kirin Tor flag next to it. Clearly, Illyria is spending a lot of time hopping between here and Dalaran, and hey, you know those bits from the War Within Features trailer that looked like they were from a cinematic? Do you think we will get that whole cinematic as part of these 10.2.7 quests? Oh, and that Zalatath model, wow, had data mined? That's probably gonna feature too, right? <sighs> Of the individual quest names, standouts are probably Galakron's Unrest, The Path Taken, and B1 Traveler Long I Stood, because they obviously reference The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, which for some reason just feels so on the nose for Zalatath shit, because yeah, of course she's an angsty, slightly edgy, and maudlin poetry major. And The Harbinger, because 
Yeah, this whole quest line is apparently setting up the new expansion baddie, and that's very exciting. We don't usually get this kind of lead into a new expansion. Honestly, these quests right here are the thing I am most excited about in 10.2.7. Well, okay, maybe the thing I'm second most excited about. The secretive pandemonium event that has long been teased on the roadmap and by every WoW dev with a social media account has now been revealed as Mists of Pandaria Remix, a new time running format event which sees players play through basically the entirety of the Mists of Pandaria expansion, patches and raids and all, but with added abilities and power ups to collect well, basically, everything in Mists of Pandaria, and much more besides. At the time of writing, this event has been available to test on the PTR for around 24 hours, and I want to take some time before giving my opinions on the event to just really tell you everything I can about it, hopefully answer any questions that you might have still lingering. So this is how it works. You need to create a new character to take part in Pandemonium, yeah I'm still calling it that, but unlike Plunderstorm, this is done on the live retail realms. This is a standalone event however, so all characters you create for Remix will only be able to take part in Remix until the end of the event. There are no portals off of Pandaria that I have been able to find. And when Pandemonium is over, all of those characters and all of their collections and achievements will be transferred into the game proper. Blizz have said that they will be enabling new character slots on each realm to account for this. So these are not Plunderstorm's alternate reality pocket dimension characters, which are basically just battle royale fodder to earn rewards for your main account. These are proper WoW retail characters on your main account, who can join guilds, and who can be played through War Within when it launches. After a brief introduction with Eternus and her infinite dragonflight chums that explain some of the core concepts to you, you are thrown into the Mists of Pandaria opening quests relevant to your faction. And like, yeah. Here's Mrs. Pandaria. Enjoy. This is, though, a very different experience to Chromie Time, or say, what you might expect from a Mrs. Pandaria classic. Firstly, of course, whatever class you are playing is the class as it is in retail right now. As you level, you will be filling out your current 10.2.7 talent trees. Also, you'll notice that just about every drop and reward in the game has been changed. There's not really any gold. You have no need for gold. There's no grey items or crafting materials because there are no professions or crafting. Everything that drops is going to be the new remix gear, most of which has gem slots on of some sort, the gems to go in them, a new plethora of consumables, and bronze. These things all drop individually, but quests will reward a cache with a selection of these things inside. You also, of course, have your legendary infinite cloak, which you wear throughout the entire event. It levels up with you all the way. Any enemy you kill has a chance to drop threads of time, which will permanently increase one of the stats on your cloak, which includes the main stat for your class and all of the secondaries, including speed and XP gain. This is what mine looked like after a few hours play. We know these numbers can each reach at least 300 and something. Most gear has gem slots which are for primal gems, which increase your secondary stats. Three of the same primal gem can be combined to create a better version of that gem. Three of those better versions can be combined to produce an even better version, and so on. There are tinker gems, which all have passive abilities on them. By the end of my testing, I had hailstorm, wildfire, static charge, and Windweaver, all equipped. And then there are Meta Gems, which award a powerful on-use ability with a cooldown, basically a trinket. And Cog Gems, which are movement, or sometimes, for me so far, tanking abilities from other classes. So at the moment, my priest, who is not a tank, is running around with a gem that gives her a monk's roll ability on top of all her baked-in priest movement spells. But I've also picked up Death's Advance, Vanish, Dark Pact and Door of Shadows. You get an absolute ton of this stuff, they throw it at you. Like I say, you get a cache of it for every quest completed and boss killed. And any gear that you don't need, which is a lot, can be scrapped anywhere, anytime, into bronze. The gear that drops is powerful, dependent on your level and the content that you got it from, as you'd expect. But 
All of it can be upgraded to max level, 35 upgrade levels using bronze at basically any settlement, although assuming you have enough bronze, the levels that you're able to upgrade the gear to depend on your character's level. So only level 70 characters can upgrade all the way to the maximum item level, if that makes sense. And I'd like you to just take a moment and look at the stats on that max upgraded gear, if you will, because frankly, they are huge and this applies to all stats on any gear. So my boots have a plus four speed on them right now, which gives me a plus 4% movement increase. And if we were to upgrade them the whole 34 levels, then that increase to speed would be in the eight hundreds, which is insane. Your early experience of playing Remix is going to be pretty normal, doing quests and dungeons just like you remember, but with these new gems and other abilities to play with along the way. Oh, and dragon riding. <laughs> yeah, did I mention dragon riding is active on Remix? Because dragon riding is active on Remix. And if you're a classic Andy, you don't know what the f I just said, don't worry, because one of the first things they do in questing when you start is to give you a dragon riding mount and teach you how to use it. And you know what? I think you might like it. So that's your opening early level experience. And I had so much fun with my little level 10 shadow priest, just enjoying Pandaria again. Quite clearly though, as your level becomes higher and you gain in power, it's going to start feeling quite a bit less like the WoW we know. It's going to be way faster. You're going to be way more powerful. And that's probably an understatement, to be honest. You're going to be a god. What does the game turn into then? Another good question. Why are you even playing this game? Two reasons, really. Uh, for fun, obviously. The early gameplay really does capture a lot of what makes classic Season of Discovery so special. The slower pace of lower level leveling through content you know or may not that has been tweaked and changed with new gameplay and possibilities thrown in. And music. Music that goes so so hard. So it's a great way of reliving or experiencing Mr. Pandaria for the first time. It can be played pretty much how you like. My first run through is probably going to be a lore run, reading quest texts and taking longer than any other player on earth because that's how I roll. And remember, achievements you complete during this game apply to your main account. You can do the Pandaria part of your lore master achievement in Miss Remix if you need to. Or you might just want to group up with your buddies and bop through dungeons leveling that way. The other reason you play this game, of course, is for the rewards. Bronze isn't just used to upgrade your gear or buy specific gems you need from vendors or buy specific scrolls and drafts that you want from vendors. No, just about every transmog, mount, and toy from Miss of Pandaria is on an infinite dragon vendor. Except the original challenge mode sets. There's no challenge mode currently. Oh, and except the tusks of Manoroth at the moment. But Eilie's Sky Mirror? 4,950 bronze, mate. Reigns of the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent? 50,000 bronze. Your class set from Mythic Siege of Ogrimmar? 5,000 bronze. And not only that, there's loads of new recolors for those mounts and world transmogs. And not only that, there's some legit new stuff like the Shadow Pan ensembles or recolors for the Dark Shaman sets. And not only that, but there are all new rewards available for completing new better achievements in each zone. So completing two of the three listed achievements in Valley of the Four Winds, for example, will bag you the Half Hill Farmer backpack. Completing one of the three Karasang Wild meta achievements will get you Chen Storm Stout's keg. Just one of the Kunlai Summit metas will get you Chen Storm Stout's bamboo hat for both your head and back. The reins of the Astral Emperor's Serpent are yours for two of the four Veil of Eternal Blossoms metas. And Landfall and Isle of Thunder, patches 5.1 and 5.2 respectively, give you the class Arsenal and class Ensemble. And what's that? Well, the recolors of the Trading Post class sets are here on a vendor as well. That's got nothing to do with Miss and Pandaria, but I'm glad they're here. And not only that, there are no restrictions on buying or gaining these appearances. So my priest can buy the warrior set from Throne of Thunder, click on the ensemble item in her bags, and my account will gain that ensemble appearance for my retail warrior alts to use as transmog. Likewise, the trading post class sets, by the way. This 
is a lot of rewards. I mean, it's all the rewards. It's more than all of the rewards. And it's going to cost a little bit of bronze if you want everything, isn't it? I saw someone worked it out. It is about a million and a half, which might sound a lot because it is. And it might take a long time to earn, but... Maybe not. Like I say, with the limited testing that's been available so far, we just don't know what this thing is going to feel like at level 70. Are you a god? Will you be able to solo anything that moves? I suspect that Blizz will want to balance this so that we still need groups for raid content, but I suspect these power levels mean we might not need a full raid party and that those raids will probably be relatively pretty easy to how we remember them because of that individual player power. What I'm saying is we basically don't know what bronze collection is going to look like at that level and at what rate we're going to get it. But if I may make just a tiny, tiny suggestion, Blizz have the chance to do the funniest thing ever here by making the single best way of farming bronze, killing the frogs on the Timeless Isle. I'm just saying. So when it comes to my opinion of Mr. Pandaria Remix, Pandemonium, I just want to point out how amazed I was by how much I enjoyed my time in Remix, to the extent that I stopped testing because I want to enjoy this properly when it launches. The joy of discovering new things, even at a very low level, was brilliant, and I highly recommend that you learn as little about this game mode as possible before you play it, just like Season of Discovery. I mean, yeah, there are going to be fun metas at max level, which it will be awesome to read about and play with, but before that, there's just no need. The sheer joy that I had on picking up a random gem from a mob and seeing that it gave me Door of Shadows or realizing that there were floaty orbs above buildings that gave you bronze when you fly through them. I want to keep those little moments and discoveries alive for myself. You've probably guessed from like my whole tone and demeanor here, but I love Pandemonium. I love it because I'm an absolute missed simp, obviously. It's easily one of my favorite expansions and continents, and it holds great little meaning to me personally. It's the expansion that I came back to WoW because Evie convinced me to, and leveling together the two of us is a really lovely memory that I have of our early relationship. Clearly, because even all these years later, I haven't put down WoW or Evie since. So I do perhaps have a little bit of a panda bias here, but I think this whole re Remix format as a concept is incredible and bursting with potential for future iterations. Because there's been a big discussion about everyone's favorite WoW buzzword around this too, FOMO. The bleak future of WoW, seasonal event hell. And whereas that was a criticism that I was very sympathetic to with Plunderstorm, I don't really feel that way with this remix. This, to me, feels like an integrated part of the main game in a way that Plunderstorm obviously is isn't. It feels like WoW because it is WoW in a way that Plunderstorm isn't. It's basically chromie time, except better, much better. A great chance for a nostalgia hit or to experience the expansion and its story in its entirety. Patches and raids and all. And that is something that I have been beating a very large drum for since chromie time first hit the PTR. Law-wise, it's pretty interesting too. The explanation for all of this in game is that Eternus is sending us through the events of Mist so that her infinite buddies can observe and change change their perspective on the true timeline, like she did. But they are infinite dragons after all, they might not always want to be so hands off, which creates interesting possibilities for other expansions that could get this treatment. Because honestly, I think they all will at some point. I think most people are going to want this to, if not replace Chromie time in its entirety, definitely be another permanent option for leveling alts. Which is why I don't feel the FOMO horror that some of the forums do. This is coming back probably permanently, but at the very least on a calendar. Now, the problem is that Missa Pandaria is the perfect expansion for this format. Totally unique vibe, hasn't had a classic version yet, and occupies that sweet spot of being well over a decade old, but also kind of modern feeling for old WoW expansions. And you kind of think any other expansion they try might be a bit of a downgrade on it, unfortunately. Ironically, I think the next best expansion for this kind of style would be Dragonflight, but that's probably a little bit too soon. So what about WOD? How about a Warlords of Draenor remix, but this this time, the infinites 
aren't so content to sit back and just watch? What if Blizz take the chance to like finish that expansion? Give us the Shattereth raid that never was. This is Season of Discovery for retail after all. It really is just such a fun and interesting and playful way to experience and use, make the most of all of this WoW content, which is really important. WoW has 20 years of this stuff and if all of it can be made as fun as this to play, then that's a feather in WoW's cap that basically no one else can match. I cannot wait for you to play this event. Hopefully you'll be able to understand for yourself why I love it so much, but I genuinely do adore Pandemonium. I actually got a little bit emotional on stream playing it just because I was so happy about how good it is. I like it when WoW is good, what can I say? With this and Season 4, I'm really enjoying working on my Dragonflight meta achievement at the moment, and the War Within Alpha launches like ridiculously soon, and I'm feeling excitement and engagement for that expansion on a story and lore level that I haven't felt for the game since early BFA. It's just a very, very good time to be a WoW player right now. And thank you, WoW player and video enjoyer, for joining us today. If you like this video, don't thank us, thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our work happen. And patrons, seriously, thank you. Because without you, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evertel. If you didn't enjoy it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is whatever Zalatath says it is, alright? Keep your eyes peeled to this channel, fam, because next week is a very, very big week for WoW indeed. We'll see you then. From me, Taliesin, cheerio!